We're back again and another season has gone by and yet again Chelsea are back on the market for a man to lead their project in the best way possible. The past week or so has given us a few candidates for that Chelsea job, however the most likely and the one that seems pretty much imminent is Leicester City's Enzo Maresca. Therefore, today I'm going to delve into the tactics behind his championship winning side, his overall philosophy, and how his football may translate to Stamford Bridge next season. So, how will Chelsea set up under yet another one of Pep Guardiola's disciples? I think we will likely see the 4-2-3-1 utilised by Maresca. However, if you've watched absolutely any of Leicester this season, you'll know how fluid that setup is dependent on the game state. In possession, Leicester Leicester often shifted into a 3-2-5 shape with wings and then the right back inverting into midfield areas and both being expected to receive the ball in the first phase. The importance of the 2-3 build-up is emphasised when we zoom in on the main dictator, Harry Winks. Looking at his stats against Norwich City towards the very beginning of the season, Winks completed 83 passes whilst maintaining a 100% pass completion rate. He won 75% of his ground duels and lost the ball just once during his 89 touches. Now though, before we delve into the five man front line that is likely going to be at Chelsea next season, I want to look at the first phase build up and how it suits Chelsea. I honestly don't think that the first phase build up was all that different to what Pochettino was implementing during his last few months at Chelsea and were arguably his most successful month in the job. Maresca inverts one of the fullbacks as I've already mentioned with Ricardo Pereira being the man to do that last season and to be honest I think Cucurella could be the man to do it under him like he did under Poch. He'll be coming into midfield areas and partnering one of Enzo Fernandes and Moises Caicedo which is where I'm a little bit stuck on who to put in that number six position. I've really been flipping, tossing and turning about who I would have as that number six and the deeper corner playmaker in possession and which one I would have as the advanced number eight that's going to be joining that front five when going forward. But to be honest I think I'm just slightly leaning towards Enzo Fernandes however either one could play that six and either one could be the advanced number eight if we're being realistic. Enzo hasn't had an excellent time at Chelsea but has still shown some very bright sparks However, with his price tag weighing heavy, this season is definitely a big one for the Argentinian. In terms of comparing the profiles of Enzo Fernandez and Harry Winks, I honestly don't think it's all that different. Obviously, the ability and talent levels are different worldly, but in terms of the actual profile and the things they like to do, I think it's fairly similar. And with the way Enzo Maresca made the most of Winks last season, I think it could be a very positive area for Enzo Fernandez to be. Enzo averaged 90 touches per 90 in the Premier League this season, whilst also sitting the top 4% of midfielders in Europe's top 5 leagues for progressive passes per 90. Therefore, I think he fits that kind of Harry Winks role probably the best between him and Moises Caicedo. Then when we're in possession and we're looking at who's going to partner that deep number six, I would like it to be Cucurella, as I've already said. He's actually turned things around fairly well this season and has even earned himself a call up to the Spanish national team after what was really a fairly underwhelming first couple seasons at Chelsea. However, you've then also got someone like Rhys James, who I also think is capable of coming inside when he's fit. So I think Enzo Maresca has a nice few different players that he can play around with because it's not just Cucurella and James. You could maybe explore playing Gusto there. However, I wouldn't really like him to be the one coming inside. Still, there's just two, maybe three, maybe even four players if you're looking at the young lads coming through that Maresca can kind of find who he likes best, find who he thinks going to do the most in the midfield and pick a nice solid option. Moving on and now we can look at the front five and how this kind of fits Chelsea. And honestly, it, it really excites me when I look at Enzo Maresca's attack. And I know that's probably very sad, getting excited about a man's ideas who I've never met. But it fits Chelsea like an absolute glove, in my opinion. And yeah, lads, I'm excited. I don't care. As you see here, Dennis Price is in an advanced position to basically create this line of five, occupying one of the Swansea centre halves. He's then partnered by the centre forward, who in this instance has come deep. And then the number 10, Dewsbury Hall, has been an excellent run in beyond. And because of them having extra numbers in advanced areas, Swansea are in all kinds of trouble. The Y fullback can't really come inside and follow the run because of the Leicester wingers holding the width. The midfielders have then also been pulled out of their defensive shape because of them trying to be aggressive and press Leicester. However, with them building that 2-3 shape and then also using the goalkeeper as an extra man, they've been pulled completely out of their position. And then it's basically just up to the three Swansea centre-halves to deal with that Leicester attack. And when you're trying to defend on your halfway line, it's 
very, very hard to kind of go 3v3. So, who would fit into these positions at Chelsea? Well, as we've kind of previously touched on when I was talking about Enzo Fernandez, the person we're going to have in that number 8 role, that advanced role that you saw Dennis Pryor in, is Moises Caicedo. To be honest with you, I think Caicedo's been a bit hard done by this season, despite having a bit of negative media coverage and obviously being portrayed fairly negatively on social media by the way that top six fans are nowadays, he's actually had quite a nice season. I think having him in the half spaces alongside Cole Palmer or someone like Nkunku or Jackson, depending on how the rotations work out at certain times, will actually be very, very good. Something I also think that Caicedo could bring to this team is something that almost ironically Chelsea youngster Cesar Cassidy brought to Leicester when he was there for the first half of the season is box crashing and arriving late and just getting something on the end of a cross, a cutback or anything like that. Sometimes depending on if Leicester were more focused on hitting the channels, Maresca went for more of a box crashing approach with one of his number eights. Rather than playing someone with a higher technical ceiling allowing them to sustain pressure on the edge of the 18 yard box, he tried to get someone who could get into the box, create things just by causing a bit of chaos. The physical profile of Cassidy when he was at Leicester, you know, that big, bulky lad, meant when he was arriving late, he could catch on to loose balls. However, he had a much less technical ability than Caicedo has, and therefore I think that Caicedo would actually excel even more than he did, because I know a lot of people weren't fans of Cassidy in the Leicester fan base, and it was because... Other than arriving late in the box, he didn't really offer all that much, whereas Caicedo would adapt to different game states a lot better than Cesar Castillo ever did at Leicester, and therefore I think he could be a big success in all kind of different tactical shifts that Enzo makes. I think a box midfield of Palmer, Caicedo, Enzo and Cucurella has a very, very high ceiling and also has so many different dynamics while still allowing this team to sustain pressure in to be honest, majority of the games they're going to play in, whilst also, again, still having defensive security when you've got that bat line behind them and probably a new goalkeeper, things could be on the up under Enzo Maresca for Chelsea. Now for the centre forward option. It gets a little bit tougher here because I think Enzo's changed things throughout the season depending on who he was playing and who he kind of, where he thought he could get the most out of teams. So I think it's actually quite important that Chelsea have got both Christopher Nkunku and Nicholas Jackson because it allows them to have them two different dynamics up top. Although Maresca certainly carried the same principles of control and dominate through having the ball, he did again still sometimes change his use of a centre forward. At times he liked the striker to come deep and to link up with the midfield to allow the number 10 or even sometimes the wide players to go in beyond on the opposition's defence. However, he also sometimes preferred to send his centre forward through on goal, going beyond the defence and being a little bit more direct. Therefore, having a technically excellent Nkunku and also a brilliant channel runner in Nicholas Jackson is probably very important and will allow some nice rotation throughout the season. To move on to the wide players, and Maresca has both of his wingers excelling 1v1 whilst also still having magic to come inside and create a little bit of something special with a strike on goal and also still being able to hit the byline sometimes and put in a solid delivery. Therefore, for me, the signing of Michael Elise makes more sense than ever. However, it's probably not a necessity with Nani Madueke also being there. I do feel like it's almost inevitable that Elise ends up at either Chelsea or Manchester United this summer. And to be honest, Elise fits the right dynamic for an Enzo Maresca winger. You look at someone like Abdul Fatawu, who's direct, runs at people, creates something. Again, with Mavadidi, he scored some wonder goals. In fact, he scored a wonder goal against Chelsea. I think Elise would be sensational under Enzo Maresca. Moving on now, in a position I kind of hint that needing recruitment a little bit earlier on, a goalkeeper. I'm quite a fan of Petrovic and think he's done quite well, but he's not the best with his feet. And with the way Maresca builds out from the back, the goalkeeper's involvement is vital to creating first phase overloads. Last season, the Leicester keeper Mads Hermansen took around 40 touches per game and also maintained a pass actually just above 80%. So I feel like, yet again, a goalkeeper arriving at Stamford Bridge is absolutely inevitable. There's been James Trafford rumours circulating, and although I don't think that's a good signing for the now, for the future, it does fit into kind of what Chelsea want, because I think he will be in England number one. However, he's not that good with his feet currently, and although, again, I think he will come on to be a top goalkeeper, at this current moment in time, 
he's not what Chelsea need. Now though, do I think Enzo Maresca is a good appointment? I think the ideal replacement that many Chelsea fans had in mind was Roberto De Zerbi. However, for whatever reason, that move hasn't really materialised and you're left with someone with not as much experience, but someone that is very, very similar to the ex-Brighton coach. I honestly think he could be a moderate success at Chelsea. However, he's going to be one that will need a bit of time, will need backing by the fans and the board are going to have to give him more than just a season. You cannot keep sacking managers after a season it's just not gonna work however it's definitely a risk and definitely something that could go very much so downhill and we could be looking in six months time at Chelsea looking for a new manager however at the same time it could go quite well and I think his philosophy will translate to the elite level fairly well but again it's a massive risk for Chelsea anyways lads if you have enjoyed today's video please do leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one peace